Hello everybody, this video is on the Bohr atomic model. Bohr's atomic model describes that electrons orbit a central positively charged nucleus and that these electronic orbits are circular and stable in nature and they are of discrete energy levels. In the diagram on the right hand side, this is an example of a Bohr atomic model of a nitrogen atom. The nucleus of a nitrogen atom is composed of protons and neutrons. Electrons in a nitrogen atom are orbiting the nucleus in circular stable orbits. Each orbit has its specific energy level. In Bohr's atomic model, he has made three postulates. The first postulate states that electrons exist in what he called stationary states. This refers to orbits of a certain radius and quantized energy level. The energy of a particular orbit is given by E equals to 1 over n squared E1, where E1 is the energy of the first orbit, that's the one that's closest to the nucleus, n equals to 1, and n is an integer that denotes which orbit it is in the atom. The first orbit is n equals to 1, the second orbit is n equals 2, and so on. Or second postulate states that electrons in an atom can move between stationary states by either absorbing or emitting electromagnetic radiation, EMR. When electrons absorb EMR, they can go up to a high energy level, and when they release EMR, they can go down to a lower energy level. The energy absorbed or emitted is exactly equal to the difference in energy between stationary states that the electrons are transitioning between. In other words, the photon, which is radiation that is absorbed and emitted, has the energy given by the difference in energy between the final orbit and the initial orbit that the electron started with. Bohr's third postulate states that electrons' angular momentum is quantized. The angular momentum of the electrons in the Bohr model is given by n times by h over 2 pi, where h is Planck's constant and 2 pi is also a constant. Bohr's atomic model is based off observations of the hydrogen emission spectrum. The emission lines produced by hydrogen is due to the transition of electrons from higher to lower energy orbits or states. There are three main sets of emission lines of hydrogen, the Barmer series, the Lyman series, and Hastings series. On this diagram, electronic transitions from a higher orbit to the second orbit, or n equals to 2, produces visible light radiation and this is collectively known as the Balmer series. When electrons move from a higher orbit to the first electron orbit, n equals to 1, they produce ultraviolet radiation, and these are known as Lyman series. When the electrons return to the third orbit, n equals to 3, they release infrared radiation, and this is known as the Pastian series. Let's focus on the Balmer series because visible light are a lot easier to observe compared to other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Light from a gas discharge tube containing hydrogen gas can be passed through a glass prism whereby dispersion occurs producing the emission spectrum shown here. In the emission spectrum of hydrogen, various visible light lines can be observed. In this diagram, there are four, the red line, the lighter blue line, and two of the blue slash violet lines on the left hand side. The emission lines in the Barmer series correspond to electronic transitions from higher energy levels to the second energy level, n equals to 2. The transition from the third orbit to the second orbit produces the red light that's seen in the emission spectrum. The transition from the fourth orbit to the second orbit corresponds to this emission line, and so on. Transitions from a higher energy level will correspond to an emission line of a higher frequency or shorter wavelength. And this corresponds to the violet part of the visible light spectrum. As you can see, Bohr's postulate and his atomic model clearly provides an explanation for the presence of these emission lines of hydrogen. In his second postulate, Bohr stated that the energy of the radiation emitted is equal to the difference in energy between the different stationary states. The energy of a stationary state is given by 1 over n squared times by the energy of the first stationary state, E1. By factorizing out E1 and substituting E, which is the energy of the radiation by HF, we can get the following equation. And by replacing frequency with the speed of electromagnetic wave divided by the wavelength, we can get Hc over lambda 
Finally, by dividing Planck's constant and C on both sides, we can get a Ryberg's equation, where R equals to 1.097 times 10 power 7. Ryberg's equation allows us to calculate the wavelength of a photon emitted when the electron transitions from a higher energy level to a lower energy level in a hydrogen atom. For example, calculate the wavelength of a photon emitted when an electron transitions from n x to 4 to the n x to 2 orbit in a hydrogen atom. So Ryberg's equation is 1 over lambda equals to r times by 1 over n f squared minus 1 over n i squared. 1 over lambda equals to 1.097 times 10 to the power of 7 times by 1 over 2 squared. So the n x to 2 orbit is the final orbit that the electron ends up in minus 1 over 4 squared, so n x to 4 is the initial orbit number, and the reciprocal of the wavelength is 2.06 times 10 to the power of 6. So if we take the reciprocal to the wavelength, the answer is 4.86 times 10 to the power of 7 meters, or we can write this as 486 nanometers. The Ryberg's equation has some limitations. It does not accurately predict the wavelength of spectral lines for elements larger than hydrogen. The accuracy of Ryberg's equation decreases with increasing atomic size. In other words, as the element gets larger, the prediction made by Ryberg's equation becomes more and more different to the actual value. Therefore, Ryberg's equation should only be used for the emission spectrum of hydrogen. The Bohr atomic model also has its limitations. Firstly, the Bohr atomic model combines ideas from both classical and quantum physics which do not reconcile. Circular motion of electrons in a stationary state is an example of a classical physics theory. The quantization of angular momentum and energy level of the stationary states are examples of quantum physics. Secondly, there is no fundamental reason for stationary states. Bohr does not explain why the circular motion of electrons do not produce electromagnetic radiation as predicted by Maxwell's electromagnetism theory. Maxwell's theory states that all charges, when they undergo acceleration, including centripetal acceleration, should produce radiation. Bohr does not explain why this is not the case for orbiting electrons in an atom. Furthermore, Bohr's atomic model cannot predict the relative intensity of spectral lines seen in all elements, including hydrogen. Some of the emission lines are much brighter than the others. It also cannot predict the emission spectra of elements heavier than hydrogen, a similar limitation shared with Ryberg's equation. Bohr's atomic model cannot explain why each spectral line, when looked at a higher resolution, consists of several hyperfine spectral lines. It also cannot explain the splitting phenomenon of each spectral line when an element is in the presence of either a magnetic field or an electric field. The splitting due to the magnetic field is known as Zeeman's effect, and the splitting due to an electric field is called the Stark's effect. This concludes the video on the Bohr atomic model.